after reading so many reviews of Melinda Cooper's Family Values, I'm slowly coming to the conclusion that pretty much all academia is entrenched within the colonial project. And it's never not been that way. Academia has always been and will always continue to be the central locus by which colonialism is spread. So now I'm all about defunding academia. Why? Well, one of those ways in which academia obfuscates the meaning of neoliberalism, the meaning of communism, whether you're studying economics like I have in school, or uh, whether you're studying all these social science stuff that is mostly left-leaning, even in the economic profession, there is obfuscation going on about what things mean. What do I mean? Milton Friedman in uh, 1965 said, and then replicated by Nixon, the fraudster, the guy who took us off of Bretton Woods. Milton Friedman said, we are all Keynesians now. Now look at epic rap battles between Milton Friedman and Hayek, for example. In Even in right-wing or even in business school or even in economics or macroeconomics, microeconomics, we're taught that the debate was always between Hayek and Friedman on one side and all the Chicago school guys and the Keynesian school on the other side. There is no debate, okay? Why did Milton Friedman come out and say, we are all Keynesians now? I'll give you another example. Hayek at the end of his life, okay? If you read early Hayek or late Hayek, Hayek at the end of his life explains that if you apply market forces to the idea of a monopolized currency itself, it's like looking up the dictionary dictionary definition of the word meaning. The dictionary blows up. Or it's like looking up, when you look at the definition of meaning in a dictionary, meaning means meaning, okay? That's why we have science class. That's why we have English class. That's why we have all classes. It's because if I could tell you what meaning is, then you wouldn't need to go to school. Here you go, this is meaning. You wouldn't need to go climb the mountain to the gurus. You already know what meaning is. Meaning means meaning. It's a circular logic, okay? That same circular logic applies when you apply capitalist market economics to money itself. What happens? There is no stability for there to be any market relationship in the first place, if that happens. That's the problem with libertarianism. Libertarianism doesn't realize that the state expands. If you if you see that all of the ways in which the state actually expands by so-called laissez fair economy. Why exactly? Why exactly does the state expand? This has to do with Nixon and this whole history of getting the Bretton Woods system changing to the petrodollar. What was the Be Bretton Woods uh, system? The Bretton Woods system was that the American dollar was tied to gold, and every other country was tied to the American dollar. And whether it's the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, all these guys came and said that if you want to do exchange in the global market, the United States will provide global security, and you can exchange in American dollars. As long as you're uh, exchanging in American dollars, you can be an American ally even. In 1971, Nixon declared that the U.S. would no longer exchange gold for U.S. dollars, which came as a complete surprise to everyone around the world. And today, we are seeing the consequences of that with regards, and what happened was then we had the petrodollar. So the basically, the United States military, which relies on oil to provide security for the world, oil became the new fixed thing. Oil and American moral supremacy, moral democratic supremacy. Of course, Nixon was supposed to maintain moral supremacy, or and we are seeing that today we are morally bankrupt with that George Bush line saying, oh, an evil man was, you know, oops. He was trying to talk about Putin, and then he ended up talking about him, his own invasion of Iraq. Ironically, the invasion of Iraq had, was strictly about Iraq taking its, its not trading in U.S. dollar anymore. Ironically, now that there's a war with Russia, Saudi Arabia can find leverage in order to 
get security from China and make sure that, and basically play that leverage off. So now we are seeing the BRICS unite and create their own currency, perhaps, because all of this sanctioning that the American uh, government is doing isn't actually working. It's creating another, they are creating their own currencies. Under the petrodollar system, oil exporting countries agreed to price and sell their oil only in the United States currency in exchange for military protection, protection and weapons. The agreement requires that countries around the world hold large amount of U.S. dollars in their foreign exchange reserves, ensuring that the dollar status around the world would be dominant. The, do the U.S. would be the world reserve currency. This is the time. This is why Milton Friedman comes out and says we are all Keynesians now. He is anticipating what is to come, what Nixon is to do. It doesn't matter anymore how much you spend. It doesn't matter about welfare. It doesn't amount, matter about doesn't matter about foreign exchange. It doesn't matter about giving money to uh, foreign governments through aid programs or whatever. We can spend almost as much as however much we want as long as we are able to control inflation. How do they control inflation? Through all these monetary games. So the U.S. empire is able to make monetary policy for countries that are outside of its sovereignty because everybody is exchanging in U.S. dollar. Now, what does this all have to do with obfuscation? Because in school, we're still taught there's a war between Hayek and Friedman on one side and Keynesians on another. We're, we're never taught what does it exactly mean we are all Keynesians now. We are all Keynesians now in one sense. In another sense, nobody is any longer a Keynesian. What does that mean? He meant that while most economists accept the basic Keynesian premises that the government can moderate economic fluctuations, they disagreed exactly how it should be done. I am now a Keynesian in economics, said Nixon. This was to accept that government intervention to manage and stabilize the economy is nonpartisan. So what does that mean? It means that Keynesian economics, the goal of Keynesian economics, such as government spending to stimulate the economy during downturns and ebbed and flow over time in the wake of the 2008 financial crisis or the 2020 COVID bailouts, many governments around the world embraced Keynesian style interventions despite their political leanings. The end of the Bretton Woods system and the adoption of it's called Keynesian neoliberalism signaled an acknowledgement for the need by a government intervention in the economy, at least to some degree, whether it's through welfare, or whatever. Neoliberalism, the neoliberal order, can accept Keynesian principles. This isn't just true, just, this isn't just about times of crisis. This is about getting the Keynesian, neoliberal Keynesian, it's called, where Keynesian policies are used to stabilize the economy, but the overarching goal rema remains the restoration and the preservation of the free market order. So Keynesian neoliberal thinkers acknowledge that markets can fail or can become inefficient without some sort of regulation or intervention. In such cases, neoliberalism could incorporate Keynesian style interventions to correct market features, failures, or to stabilize the economy during recessions or shape the economy so as to create a situation which is normalizes market social relationships. Whether there are temporary tax cuts, stimulus checks, or bailouts to keep businesses afloat, all of these, or whether there's welfare, or foreign aid, or even public health care, all of these things can are with an aim towards normalizing market operation. Even schooling itself is funded so that we have a neoliberal university. The, the reason why we go to school isn't for uh, reading, writing, arithmetic necessarily. The reason why we go to school since ancient, <laughs> since um, since industrialization is to get a job at the end of the day. So the state could do the libertarian things like enforce contract and property rights, or it could redistribute goods. The, the state interventions are there to ensure 
market competition, and even more to ensure neoliberal social relationships and neoliberal psychology, which is why I have this on my anti-psychology playlist, tinyurl.com anti-psychology. These are fundamentally neoliberal ideas, but the state active role reflects some form of Keynesian thinking. So modern, modern monetary theory challenges these traditional views about fiscal policy, debt, and currency, these microeconomic views that are applied to macroeconomics. The United States has flexibility in managing their economic policy. This is because they can essentially create more currency when needed. The US dollar also has a unique position because it's considered the world's primary reserve currency, which further increases the US financial flexibility. Modern monetary theory argues that for such countries, the budget deficit or national debt is not a primary concern. We are over one trillion in debt right now. The main thing is to control inflation. Now, now we are we've we've played that hand so many times that inflation is starting to hurt us as well. The government can spend more on programs like welfare and foreign aid without necessarily having to worry about balancing the budget. They can afford this by creating more money as long as this extra spending doesn't lead to excessive inflation. It's important to realize countries are trading in US dollars and are effectively financing the US deficit through their trade in US dollars. They need to hold US dollars for trading purposes and even purchase US government debt from treasury bonds. This increases the demand for US debt allowing the US borrower US to borrow money at a low, lower interest rates. Of course we are coming to the end of this not a long-term sustain sustainability model because politicians, of course, they, when you spend money that's not yours, <laughs> and these days they can you know, have their husbands or wives uh, participate in the stock market because they know what laws are going to change. <laughs> if you, <laughs> so there's all of these corrupt corruption that can uh, play out as well. Regardless, the point here is to go against all of these leftist arguments that are saying that conservatives and neoliberals are somehow allied in this idea of restricting welfare when they are not. Conservatives are people like Ron Paul and Rand Paul. Those are the classical conservatives, I say, the libertarians, are critical of the gold, of not having a gold standard, for example. I don't know about Rand Paul, but Ron Paul definitely. So now we have a situation where if you have social welfare or the reason why you have public health care isn't because you care about the people. It's because you want to make sure that your tax farm, your cows, your livestock have their antibiotics. The reason why you have education, OK, and this is why I started with education, is to obfuscate the truth, have everybody is a, is a very sophisticated brainwashing program. The reason why you have welfare is to have people reliant on the state. Okay, so the conservative arguments still hold. This is what the left just doesn't understand. All of these people that are giving five stars to Melinda Cooper's family values. That book is so insane because it just focuses on rumination this public rumination that people have on the left, on the, on the, on the fake neoliberal left, on the unwittingly colonizer neoliberal left, the unrealizing that they are neoliberal left. They think that the reasons why it's happening is because of these, because they're trying to control people in this, mm, who cares about sexuality? As long as who cares about all of these things? Neoliberalism, everywhere it goes, the first step, is to destroy culture, to destroy tradition, and to replace all forms of authentic subjectivity, historical subjectivity, cul cultural subjectivity with neoliberal subjectivity. What does that mean? What is neoliberal subjectivity? Watch my anti-psychology series. Watch my history of mental health regimes that are creating neoliberal subjectivity regimes and understand that academia has never had its hands clean from 
the anthropology of the past to the prescribed intersectionality of the present, neoliberalism is and neoliberal colonization comes at the root of academia. It wouldn't be in the curriculum otherwise if it didn't already bow down to the regime of neoliberal subjectivity. It wouldn't be in the regi- in the curriculum and you wouldn't have heard about it if it didn't already agree with the neoliberal subjectivity. 